Okay. Coming to the next one, metabolism. Now see, the major metabolic organ in human beings is liver. Liver is the place where metabolism occurs because liver has got enzymes called as microsomal enzymes. You have microsomal and microsomal enzymes. All the enzymes' job is to metabolize xenobiotics as well as whatever the food will take, whatever the internal uh, neurotransmitters are there, chemicals are there. All of them will get get metabolized majorly in liver. Out of that, there are certain uh, organelles or they are called as microsomes. Inside the microsomes, you have certain class of enzymes known as cytochrome P450. See, 450 is related to nanometer absorption. The cytochromes will absorb at this nanometer, hence they are called as cytochrome P450. Now, the job of this enzyme is to metabolize. Now, understand this. Why the drugs need to get metabolized? Now, what happens with the drugs? Whenever we take a drug, it shows its action. After that, it has to go out of the body because it is a xenobiotic. Xeno means it is a foreign molecule. It has to go out of the body. Body will make sure that it is expelling it out of the body. If it has to go out of the body, the major route of elimination is urinary elimination. Urine, ninety-eight percent it is made up of water. So, if a drug molecule has to get eliminated out of the body, it has to be water soluble because from the urine, majority of the drugs goes out of the body. If it is not water soluble, it will get again reabsorbed, remains inside the body. Now, how this water solubility gets because of this metabolism? In metabolism, you have two things are there. You have phase one reactions and phase two reactions. Now, what happens in phase one reaction? In phase one reactions, you have oxidation, you have reduction, and you have hydrolysis. Now, the basic job of phase one reaction is oxidation means attaching a OH group, which gives polarity. Reduction removes a particular lipophilic group and exposes hydrophilic group. Hydrolysis by attaching OH or H again it increases polarity. The basic job of phase one reaction is increase the polarity. Once the drug's polarity is increased, they will easily get eliminated through urinary elimination because urine is made up of completely water. So in order to get eliminated, they need to have hydrophilic groups. But what we have seen in absorption, in order to get absorbed, they need to have certain amount of lipophilicity. So we take drugs which has got certain amount of lipophilicity, and that lipophilicity is destroyed or removed by metabolism. Especially in phase one, they will be attaching a hydroxy group, which increases polarity. Reduction removes a hydrophobic group. Hydrolysis attached exposes hydrophilic groups. All of them will result in increasing hydrophilicity to enable elimination. What happens in phase two? Phase two is a kind of conjugation reaction. Conjugation means the drug molecules will be conjugated or combined with another molecule. Especially in this, you see acetylation, acetylation, glucuronidation, glucuronidation, and then glutathione attachment. Now see what is happening. Leaving acetylation, glucuronidation, and glutathione conjugation. Both of them are a kind of big molecules. Now, why in phase two a big molecule is getting attached with a drug molecule? Now, what happens is when you when we see about elimination, elimination majorly is through kidney from the nephrons. From the nephrons, you know, every minute there is a lot of amount of blood is being filtered. From the blood, a lot of chemicals are taken out, gets into nephron. From the nephron, they will be going out. But body will try to reabsorb water and electrolytes. If it is not reabsorbing, body will undergo dehydration. More than 99% of the blood, filtered blood will get reabsorbed. Let me give you one statistical example. Every minute, every nephron will filter 120 ml of blood, 120 ml. But what is coming out is only one ml. Out of 120 ml, 119 ml is getting reabsorbed. Only one ml goes out of the body per minute. The reason why this much of reabsorption occurs is if it is not happening, all the water, all the electrolytes will be get lost of the body. So what is required, body will get reabsorbed. What is not required, it goes out of the body. That so more than 99% will get reabsorbed. Now, see the phase one will try to increase hydrophilicity. By chance, if hydrophilicity is not enough, the drug will get reabsorbed. To avoid that, phase two will do a conjugation. Conjugation means attaching glucuronic acid and glucophilic. When this big molecule is attached to that drug molecule, reabsorption is not possible. 
So what what is this phase two doing? It is inhibiting reabsorption of drug into the body so that it will get eliminated easily. Now understand about metabolism. The basic job of metabolism is to eliminate the drug out of the body. The other thing, the moment you do attach some group to that drug, the chemistry of the drug is changed. The moment chemistry of the drug is changed, it will not show any action. You know, you know, we all read about uh, expiry date. What do you mean by expiry date? After that expiry date, when the drug expires, what happens if you take that expiry expiry drug? We should not take that expiry drug. See, expiry date is given by doing some arcaneous kind of ex experiments. Accelerated stability studies are carried out to know how long the drug maintains its structural integrity. So whatever the drug you take, it has the structure need to be intact as such. Any change in structure will cause us loss of activity. That change in structure, they will see when this change in structure occurs. That is what is given as expiry date. Now what is happening in metabolism? The change in structure occurs in phase one. The moment change in structure occurs, the drug loses its activity. Few exceptions are there. Even after metabolism, some of the drugs will give active metabolites, leaving that few majority of drugs will lose their action. Again, hydrophilicity is increased. Even if it misses there, phase two will make sure to attach big molecules so that it will not be reabsorbed again into the body. So this is what happens in metabolism, phase one, phase two. But see, the cytoch cytochrome P450 enzymes, there are certain drugs which will increase the activity of the drugs, or certain drugs will inhibit the activity of the drugs. They are called as enzyme inducers and enzyme inhibitors. Let us say about enzyme inducers. Enzyme inducer means these drugs will increase the activity of this cytochrome P450. That means when people take the drugs, the, the activity of the drugs increases. So the drugs will get rapidly metabolized. That means duration of action of the drug will get reduces because they are activating that particular enzyme. Drugs like barbiturates, Phenotoin, carbamazepine, all these drugs has got this problem. So when people take these drugs, the cytochrome P450 activity is increased. When cytochrome P450 activity is increased, the duration of action of the drugs will get reduced. Not only these drugs, duration of action, whatever the drug you take along with this, their activity is also reduces because you are increasing the activity of this enzyme. So these are called as Inducers. You know, one of the other major important is rifampicin. Rifampicin is used to treat tuberculosis. Usually, tuberculosis treatment is with combination of drugs. At least four to five drugs are given In, to treat tuberculosis. Isoniazid, rifampicin, ethambutal, streptomycin are given together. Given together for a long time. In such cases, rifampicin will be inducing enzymes, and all the other drugs duration of action also reduces. So keeping this thing in mind, the drug doses are curated or adjusted. Now the other thing, there are certain drugs which will inhibit this activity. They are known as enzyme inhibitors. Enzyme inhibitors. Now there are certain drug classes which are used to inhibit a particular enzyme in the body. Along with that enzyme, they will also inhibit cytochrome P450 enzymes. Example, protease inhibitors. In order to treat HIV infection, protease inhibitors are given. Protease inhibitors are a big class which all of them ends with with like lokinavir, ritonavir, nelfinavir, sacunavir, indinavir, darunavir, all of them ending with there are protease inhibitors which are used to treat HIV infection. Their job is to inhibit protease enzyme. But along with inhibition of that enzyme, they also inhibit cytochrome P450. What happens when these metabolizing enzymes are inhibited? the drug duration of action is increased. So whatever the drug you take along with that will be acting for longer duration of time because these drugs are inhibiting these particular enzymes. Not only this, one more class is there, you know, the antifungal drugs like fluconazole, itraconazole, all of them. Again, these class ajoles, the mechanism of action is, they will inhibit a particular steroidal enzyme, 14 alpha demethylase. Along with inhibition of that enzyme, they will also inhibit cytochrome P450. If they are inhibiting, the drug duration of action increases. So these two need to be considered. Enzyme inducers, enzyme inhibitors. 
say enzyme inhibitors will reduce the duration of action whereas an enzyme inhibitors will increase the duration of action in fact there is a drug called as ritonavir ritonavir is popularly used to increase the duration of action of other hiv drugs it is also known as a booster drug so ritonavir is included so that the other drugs duration of action is increased so what happens in metabolism a drug in metabolism will get inactivated so the activity is lost because of phase 1 and phase 2 or in certain cases drug may also give active metabolism active metabolism few cases are there like diazepam diazepam undergoes phase 1 and it gives non diazepam now non diazepam is an active metabolism what happens with this this drug is undergoing metabolism and again it is giving an active metabolism means this also has got activity diazepam is a sedative hypnotic not as come is also sedative hypnotic it is also used to treat anxiety so what happens duration of action is increased diazepam as such acts for 12 to 15 hours but again it is releasing one more active metabolite so the duration of action is increases similarly one more drug is there like spironolactone spironolactone is a mineralocorticoid antagonist it blocks aldosterone receptor but the spironolactone undergoes metabolism and gives an active metabolite known as candrelone so with this active metabolite the duration of action is increased so two things drug may give an active metabolite it drug may give active metabolite the other thing there are certain class of drugs known as pro drugs now pro drugs as such they are not active they will undergo metabolism and releases an active metabolite so the best example is levodopa levodopa is a pro drug it undergoes metabolism and releases dopamine there is a logic for this see this drug is used to treat parkinson's disease in parkinson's disease in the brain in microstriatal pathway dopamine levels are going down so how do you treat it by increasing dopamine if you directly give a dopamine it cannot cross blood brain barrier it cannot get into the brain it is of no use but you convert into levodopa form levodopa is an amino acid dopamine is just an amino you can see that levodopa is see dihydroxy phenyl alanine in the levo form phenyl alanine is an amino acid when you give this amino acid in the brain in blood brain barrier there are amino acid carriers are there which will take up this levodopa gets into the brain once it gets into the brain it undergoes decarboxylation and releases dopamine and dopamine cures the condition so in in that particular cases prodrex are used some other drugs like you know ace inhibitors angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors in angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors all of them ends with prils captopril lisinopril fosinopril all of them in that only captopril and lisinopril are active drugs the remaining all the drugs are pro drugs enalapril bisapril vinapril enalapril is an ester it undergoes ester hydrolysis and release an acid and that acid is active drug enalapril so that pro drug is converted to active drug so metabolism could be of anything a drug becomes inactive the major goal is to make it inactive and sent out of the body through elimination a drug may give an active metabolite finally pro drugs are converted to active drugs this is about metabolism